Hi, how are you? Thank you for stopping by. My name is Shannon and this is my YouTube channel Whiskey and Wool and it is season three of my Knitter's Life series. Welcome. I am so happy you're here. I don't think this is going to be all that much of a regular episode. There will be knitting. There will be spinning. Um, but I might cut out a couple other segments. So uh, I'm going to jump right into updates, life updates. <laughs> Usually I talk about, uh, I do a little whiskey or gin chat and then I do some knitting, you know, finished objects, whips, and then spinning. There's a lot going on over here. <laughs> So we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, so let me let me just get into get into that. Let me talk to you about um, the move. So I am moving house. I have been talking about this since January, and um, I found a place pretty quickly. I found a place towards the end of January, and we I put a contract in. I'm alone. I live alone. I'm a uh, I'm a single mom got a divorce a long, long time ago. I've been raising my kids by myself for um, 25 years. And I, yeah, I am, um, yeah, they're, they're old now. <laughs> they're on their own. They're out. They moved out a few years ago and I've been renting and it's, you know, it just came time for me to get it together and go um, move into a place where I can own so anyway yeah I, long story short I put in a, an offer on a place a co-op apartment right along the Hudson River on the New Jersey side I live in New Jersey northern New Jersey right by New York City and um, yeah it's been a real roller coaster I still don't know today into March no April April 1 happy April Fool's Day everyone <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I still don't know today whether or not I actually have the place. It's been, I've been under contract and working towards buying it, but, uh, yeah, yesterday my realtor sent me any, uh, text message and asked me where I wanted to keep looking. Like if I wanted to keep looking, what towns would I be open to? <laughs> I, I just wanted to cry. Because I don't even, I, I mean, I, I know she's just doing it. I realize now she's doing it for herself, like for her own. You know, she probably had a little downtime in her day on a Friday and was like, oh, let me just see. So, yeah, it's not been fun. Um, but I'm in the home stretch, I think. My closing date should be the week of April 10th. That's two weeks from now. Uh, but... We're not sure because there's still some things that need to get settled. Um, mostly title search and appraisal. Uh, sorry, appraisal is done. My co-op app. So I have to be interviewed by the board. I don't know when that's going to happen. So, I mean, worst case, we're probably talking about the end of the month. But I am running out of time where I am right now. So if by the end of the month, I'm not in my new place, I'm going to need to scramble to get out of where I am now. So that's where I'm at. Um, and yeah, I mean, I wish, I hope it all works out and I'm moving into a new place where I'm going to be staying for a while and it won't be a temporary place that I'm paying a shit ton of money for, for no, <laughs> for very, no return. No return. Um, yeah, so as soon as I'm done with this episode, filming this episode um, and getting it online, I'm going to be breaking down. Most of this is broken down. You can see if you've been here a while, you know that there's usually stuff over here, uh, a bed and stuff, and it's broken down. So yeah, I'm going to break all this down. This piece of furniture next to me is going to be sold as will the bed and a couple other pieces here 
And then I'm going to just really kind of throw myself into packing. Uh, I figured out that I have enough knitting projects that I'm working on now to get me through the next month or six weeks or so. So I'm going to just, I'm going to pack everything. I'm going to pack my knitting. I'm not going to pack all my clothes. I'm going to pack some of them, things that I know I definitely, because it is, you know, it's getting warmer. So things that I know I won't be wearing anymore will be packed and things I'm not using anymore. I'm going to try not to make it seem too, I mean, this is the, the tension, right? Between do you put at everything and just live with stacks of boxes for a couple weeks or do you wait till the last minute and throw everything in boxes to be done? So um, I got a shipment of boxes yesterday, so I'm going to, I'm going to fill them up and then I, that'll give me a good idea of how many more boxes I'll need. Um, because I'm not sure how many boxes I'm actually going to need. Yeah. So it's been a lot. I just have a lot going on in my head and that's why this episode may not necessarily be quite what you're used to here. <laughs> So yeah, I um, don't have any finished objects. I have uh, whips, a lot of whips. Um, and yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna do a Jenner whiskey chat. I don't have anything planned and I don't know if I'm gonna have the bandwidth to do it later today. Um, it is, I should say, it is April 1st, it is morning, it is pouring rain outside right now, so it's a little gloomy day. Um, perfect day to be inside knitting or relaxing, watching movies, packing up because you're moving, all of those things. <laughs> it's a great day for that. Um, so I, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going to be in the mood to research and film a gin or whiskey chat, but I do have some good gins to share, particularly that are on my mind right now. We'll see. It might be here. If it's here, I'll tell you where to skip to if you don't want to see it. And if it's not here, I'll be jumping right into whips. <laughs> All right. Um, let me start with the two whips that you're familiar with. Martha is got, has got one of them on. And uh, I'm going to show you this other one first. I decided to knit a, another daily pullover by Paula Pereira using La Biena May helix combined with kumo so helix is a corydale wensleydale blend i think uh oh no falkland moreno and gotland blend sorry i completely messed that up it, but it is a lace weight yarn and then her kumo is a um suri silk blend and it's also considered lace weight but i i think it's a little bit heavier than the helix so two strands together two lace weights generally equal a kind of heavy fingering weight so i am using those two strands together to knit this daily pullover it's really making beautiful fabric i did buy um, both yarn bases in the same color wisteria um, I've, I've had them a while, had them in my stash for a while. If you've been here <laughs> for since 2022, you know, I've been trying to knit up stash because I ended up having quite a lot of it. Um, and I w I am a little worried about where I'm going to store stuff. I mean, how I'm going to store stuff. I know I have most of my yarn figured out, store stuff in the new place where, the, whether it's this new place or another new place. <laughs> Um, cause I will be downsizing somewhat. Um, but, uh, sorry, there's just going to be sprinklings about moving in this episode all throughout. Um, but yeah, this, anyway, back to the daily pullover. This is the fourth one that I've made. Um, I made one out of the linen quill that the pattern was planned for. I made one out of linen, hundred percent linen, which is really awesome. I love that sweater. It's great for warm months. And I made a superwash version, which I need to lengthen. So I might, I think I'm going to hold that out in case I, you know, get something off the needles and want to just get that finished, finish that up. 
I am knitting on size four needles, US size four needles or 3.5 millimeter needles, which is the uh, needle size recommended for the pattern. Um, and I did not get gauge. I knit bigger than, I have um, a bigger gauge than what the pattern called for. So I'm knitting the size two to get to like a size four or so. Um, I have plenty of yarn, so I'm not gonna run out of yarn. Um, but yeah, so far so good. This is really cozy and comfortable to hold on to. Um, I really want to get it done before the end of April because after that it's going to start warming up a bit and I won't really have opportunity to wear it. And I also, hairy yarns, knitting hairy yarns in the warmer months, like the yarn can sometimes get stuck because of you know, moisture between your fingers and stuff. So um, not really into that experience. So I'm trying to trying to whip on through, but I really love it. It's just been a really nice mindless um, knit. It's I like to have something that is stockinette or fairly mindless, even ribbing, just ribbing is fine so that I can, you know, have something that I can knit on without really looking at it too much. And I can you know, have it during social events or what, whether, you know, while I'm on campus or what, while I'm grading papers. Um, I am a, a academic um, by trade. I, um, I am a teacher, but I'm also a administrator and a legislator. I'm a senator, an elected senator, and I am in the Senate body. I've been elected to lead one of the chief councils. So I have a pretty big job um, outside of the, my knitting hobby and any knitting related related things that I do. So um, yeah, so it's really nice to have that. I'm in a lot of meetings due to all the committee and council work that I do. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot of meetings anyway on, on an academic campus, on a, on a university campus. So yeah, so that is um, the daily pullover. That has been my mindless knit, and it is the furthest along. I, I think I have, so I split for the sleeves, obviously, and I've knit a few inches of the side seam, I mean, down the sides. Um, <clears throat> probably have another 10 or 12 inches to go before I start the ribbing, and then it'll be done. All right, moving on, moving on. Um, Martha here is wearing the Samal by Hohi Locatelli, and it is knit out of some natural black sheep. I'm gonna pull it down so you can see it. Some natural black sheep wool from Woolly Mammoth. Um, I was a little nervous about knitting this pattern out of this dark yarn because I was thinking that the texture wouldn't really show too much and it probably just looks like a black blob from where you are now, but I actually really love it. I think as a type of yarn to pattern, this is a really good match. Um, I don't always nail the match between pattern and yarn, but I think this time I did. Um, I don't mind the darkness because in up close and while, while I'm working on it, I can both feel the texture and see the texture. It's a really cool stitch. It's called sand stitch. And then there's this really cool little, I'm gonna hold it, let me hold it this way. It's just really interesting cable detail along the front bands. It doesn't show up so well on screen as it does in life. Like in life, you can see it from an arm's distance pretty well. Um, so I think I'm gonna love this sweater. Uh, I also just split for the sleeves on this one. I have about a half inch maybe of um, body stitches that I've done. So I've made it through that really arduous like five million stitches on your needles as you're <laughs> knitting that section right before you split for the sleeves um, where every row seems to take an hour or two. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. There's a couple really things that really so Hoi Locatelli, I always think her patterns, she really likes to chill when she's knitting. She doesn't wanna work all that hard. So she, the way she writes her patterns, they're written in a way that, that is set up for that, you know, that, that sort of laid back approach to knitting. Um, she made, we're making a garter stitch. I hope you can see it, a garter stitch 
front band so you're knitting those as you go it obviously it's top down and it's um, raglan sleeve construction um, and also the way that the front was constructed was really interesting she she had us do a, a ton of short, short rows I was very confused at first because I'd never had done a construction like that to get the drop the front neck to drop to be dropped down so yeah that's about the way, where the drop is I know again it's black it's hard to show you but I can see it quite fine um yeah so there's like about a two and a half inch drop there's the front neck edge um that's with lining up the bottom front and back bottom um I love it I really love it it is a little bit um it's very interesting the way she did it the sand stitch pattern is probably the most sort of the thing that slows me up but sand stitch pattern what you're doing is you're this isn't giving anything away because you could google this right now and find it um, it is a, a row of knit alternating with a row of pearls and knits and then you alternate the knits and pearls between those knit pearl rows so it's like a four stitch four row repeat knit a row knit pearl a row knit a row knit per, pearl knit a row if that makes sense um, so because of the black yarn it is a little tedious at times to um, you know examine the fabric and figure out whether I should be knitting starting that section off with a knit or a purl stitch um, but it's not too bad it's not too bad and I'm you know I get around to the side that I'm just knitting on and of course I fly through it also knitting this on a size 4 needle 3.5 millimeter needle um, I'm knitting in about the middle of the range of the pattern it's pretty got a lot of sizes it I think I'm knitting like size 7 or so and I think it has 14 sizes I generally end up in the middle of size ranges um, I really really love this yarn Emma is did just launch a very close Emma of woolly mammoth did just knit uh, or sorry launch a very close fingering weight four ply yarn for um, that's very similar to this and she did a little episode about the sheep on uh, or she did a little you know something about the sheep on um, Instagram at least if not on her YouTube channel she has a YouTube channel so yeah i really really love it this one was a limited edition and it is a hebridean black well welsh mountain blend 50 50 of each of those um and uh, just love it love 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 um if you're wondering about the stitch markers i am keeping track of when i need to do a buttonhole uh, every time the silver marker moves to the top that's a buttonhole round a uh, round rather buttonhole round so yeah so wait that way i'll keep my buttonholes even the pattern is older i would say it's from like 2018 it might be from even earlier than that um so the sweater is quite long longer than i usually wear um cardigans so i don't know i'm gonna figure out when i get there like how much how long i want it but i generally um can you see yeah you can see her I generally have my cardigans end about here so we'll see Martha's my size this is Martha my mannequin she's my size I'm actually not gonna put this back on because I just want to keep moving here um, so you'll just see Martha with just half of Martha with her t-shirt um, what was I gonna say? I had a, had a thought, went right out of my head. Oh, I'm wearing, I wanted to tell you what I'm wearing. This is an old knit of mine. This is the Stone Crop Cardi by Andrea Mowry. Um, knit out of some non superwash fingering weight from Uchutita, which who, I don't even know if she dies anymore. I haven't seen her on Instagram in a long time. Maybe she's, the pandemic kind of threw a lot of people off and I, I lost track of her during the pandemic. I have seen her occasionally. Anyway. Ushishita with some spin cycle for the color changing. I really love it. It's a cozy sweater. It's perfect for a day like today um, where it's kind of dreary and damp and you know you want a little ventilation, a little venting. And I'm wearing my Stitch Together Studio t-shirt. Um, buy me yarn and tell me I'm pretty. <laughs> She's doing some interesting things. I don't know if you pay attention to her at all. If you know her, she's a yarn dyer who is phasing out. Her yarn dyeing. Um, 
because she's going to become a tattoo artist, which is really cool. Um, but I, she has merch still, I'm pretty sure. Like some merchandise. I don't know if she's going to continue. I don't know what her plan is, but anyway. Okay. New whip. New to you whip. I am working on another one by one rib throw, um, holding 10 strands together and knitting on a US 17 or 12 millimeter needle. It's really big. Um, I literally cast this on, like I had this yarn pulled and all put together before I finished the purple one. So this, if you're new here, this is the third one of these I've made this year. I started out, um, I had, a, as I was assessing what I had in terms of yarn for the move, coming upcoming move, I realized that I had more than 70 skeins of single, single skeins, just a single skein of a color of yarn. I had more than 70 of those. And so I started to group them together by color just to see what I had and try to think about projects. And one of my sons said he would love a throw. And I was like, oh, I could hold like 10, 10 strands together <laughs> and make a really chunky blanket. And it would knit fast. Um, I was first looking at the I cord. If you're watching Max M. Seer from Max the Knitter and uh, Le Garçon on YouTube, he's been talking about it. I bought an I cord maker and I was thinking I would knit this I cord trim into a blanket. And But he's actually writing a pattern for that. And one skein does not go very far. Um, it seems to me. So I'm interested in seeing what his pattern works out to looking like, like what it what it ends up being. It's a very slow project, it seems, um, even for him. I mean, he's probably not working on it exclusively. But um, yeah, so I quickly realized like holding 10 strands together was probably going to be much faster and, and uh, less uh, upfront work. So that's what I'm doing, holding 10 strands together. I held 10 strands together for a black one, a black and gray monotone one, which actually had lots of really cool color speckling's going on through it. And then I made, I showed you last time, two weeks ago, I showed you a purple one that I had finished for my other son who saw the black one and was like, I want one too. And I was like, of course. Um, and he loves purples and blues. So I made a purple and blue one for him. And then I, as I was looking through, I. I was thinking a yellow one would be cool because I've been dreaming about a yellow throw for years um, because of Pearl Soho's um, yellow throw that they made a few years ago using knit collage yarn. Really pretty, I'll put a picture on screen. Um, I realized I had enough yellow to make a yellow one. So here we go, here's my yellow one. 10 strands together. Um, it's coming along pretty well. It's very addictive knitting because um, what I did with the black one, I started out with 10 full skeins and knit until they were almost gone and I reached about 40 inches and I'm knitting in a one by one rib pattern um, that makes it be about 45 inches wide. So I didn't really want a square. I wanted typical 40 by 60, 45 by 65 inches for the throw. So I got to about 40 inches. The full skein started to roll out, a run out, so I started to gather all these smaller scraps and stuff that I had that were in the same color family to finish it. I I barely made it. I ended up with like the tiniest amounts of leftovers um, from from those. And it felt great because I used up so much yarn. I was basically using like 15 skeins worth of yarn in this uh, throw and then for the purple one I learned okay I should mix up the full skeins with the partial skeins in the first 10 that I'm using so then those partial skeins roll out, run out I attach another full skein or other partial skeins and it's not like everything runs out at once because that's what happened with the black one and I was so worried about color continuity so um, color continuity is better if you can kind of have several strands that continue as one runs out um, so I've been doing the same thing with the yellow. I started with a few. So if you see tails, that's where I attached a new skein. Let me hold it this way. Um, so yeah, I did the same thing with the yellow. I started with about four or five full skeins and four or five partial skeins. Uh, some of those partial skeins have already ran, run out and I've attached new skeins so I should be pretty I think I'll be fine um, I've knit so far about 24 inches so I'm 
um, approaching the halfway point. Um, what happens with this, what I can tell you, a couple a couple people have reached out to me and told me that they thought this was a great idea and they're planning to do one too. And maybe you're already well along or maybe you're like just hearing it now for the first time and you're like, oh, that's super interesting. I wanna do one too. I have a lot of partial skeins. I actually think this would be, I did tonal, but I think it would be gorgeous using a bunch of multicolored skeins. So I do wanna say that. I may try that um, down the road, though this is the last one I'm gonna make for a while because once it gets warm, I'm not gonna want a big heavy blanket laying on me um, to, while I knit because it is hard to manage. Um, but what I do to find out the length, or you can see there's my stitch marker marking 24 inches. I lay it down and then I open it up and that will make your, your length shrink. So this holding it, it's 30 inches, but when I pull it apart, it's only 24. Um, so do make sure you do that as you go. Um, also, I have realized that I have my yarn all sitting in a big bucket here. And I realized that um, in order to make the knitting go faster, it's best to like pull out a bunch of strands at once, smooth them out, get those wrinkles out as I go, and just loop it up on itself. And then this looped mass just goes right back in the bag. I haven't had any trouble with tangling. It just, I'm just looping over loop and then it just goes right back. I throw it right back in the bag and knit and it goes much faster. And then when I knit through everything that I pulled, I pull more and do the same routine and that helps it keep very smooth. Um, also what happened to me with the black one, since it was the first one I made, sometimes um, if I was pulling from a skein, the uh, I pull from the outside, but if you pull from the inside, the same thing may happen where the inside one will get loose and kind of get stuck in there. And I was knitting with like 11, 12, 13 strands at times because I didn't know that that happened until I went to pull more. And um, you can either cut it or just go for it. I just kind of let it go. It is a good way to use up, like if you're getting towards the end of the blanket and you want to use up you know, the rest of the skein, you could easily just pull in the end and just knit with 11 strands. It really doesn't make a big difference. There was no noticeable difference where I had changed um, skeins. And you could also, you could throw in here some DK or worsted even if you wanted and just count them as two strands. Uh, I have a little dab of yellow DK that I'm going to throw in uh, at some point when I'm you know, down on scraps. Also don't think it's gonna make a big difference. The only thing I would say is that those will be a bigger presence in your fabric. Like you'll see, they'll make a bigger, they'll stand out more uh, cause they're thicker in your fabric in terms of color. So you won't get this, you know, as close a marl. Well, I can show you this to you a little closer too if you wanna see. There's a lot of other colors going on because I am using some yarns that are quite speckled like this one really love this one um, I'm also mixing in some like old gold skeins too so there's bright yellow there's some gold um, tan I have peach I actually threw in about halfway through this piece I have knitted I threw in this orange skein because it's single ply it's a single ply and single plies are really great for shawls but I am all shawled out I have so many shawls and I have um, two shawls that are not completed that are in my whips like sleeping whips pile that I may get to someday at some point um, so I'm really trying to use up my single strand single ply single skeins um, too so I just threw this in you can't even tell you don't even know you wouldn't be able to know where I put it in there's no noticeable difference in the colors none it's really funny to me. Um, so I think I said this when I was knitting on the black one. You can definitely throw in skeins that you're like, a mystery skein that you got and you're like, oh, this is not that great. You could throw that in. No one would know. It's just gonna blend. It's gonna be part of the background and it might even look really good. <laughs> so yeah, definitely something to, to uh, think about. Um, I have one more whip. I really had no business casting on another whip, but I started to think about, 
you know, I got to start packing stuff and I want to make sure I have enough knitting to keep me occupied even after everything gets packed. Um, so I cast on the Academy vest by Skanger Knits. I don't have much to show, just about a little dab of rib. This is a, a indigo dyed um, navy yarn. So yeah, just been working on it. Uh, what I don't like is that it does crock. Um, crock is a term that the textile industry uses when the color comes off. Um, and with for knitting, when you're knitting, when you're hand knitting, crocking will happen, like for me, when I'm hand knitting this, it happens around where I'm tensioning the yarn on my hand, but also on my palms, like around the edges where I'm holding the yarn and it's a result of the oils in my skin the oils in my skin are making the dye come off it's really funny to me I did swatch and I used a light color which I'm not going to be using in the I just wasn't sure I was trying to work out colors there is absolutely no bleeding nothing the water didn't even turn blue so it's really interesting to me that that could I could get my my hands get so gross looking as I'm knitting this yarn but yet swatch wetness not a drop of color comes off um you can also like this often happens with if your jeans if your blue jeans are indigo dyed you might when they're new you might see the dye on your legs or maybe on your underwear um and that's the dye doing the same thing rubbing off um i haven't tried a dry a dry rub like rubbing it on a piece of paper to see if the dye would come off I have a feeling it won't <coughs> it's just um it's just one of those things that indigo does um, and I think once I get into the color work of this sweater it won't be or this vest it won't be it won't bother me as much because I'll be using different colors do want to show you the colors. I ended up pulling a few hand spun stains out um, to do the colors on this. And I think it's going to be so pretty. These two are hand spun. This is a uh, neon-y, poppy, peachy color. And then this is uh, an old gold color. Um, and then I'm adding in, I had to retrieve some yellow from my yellow scraps because I do want to use a pop of bright yellow. And I'm going to add in some pink. So these are. this is going to be the color palette. I think it's going to be really beautiful the way it's going to lay out on that deep dark navy blue. Um, I also pulled out, I, I noticed that people used, I pulled out some orange, hand spun orange. Um, it wouldn't be much because then it turns to purple, which also would be pretty, but I don't, I think it would be more blendy with the dark blue because it's such a dark color. Um, I noticed that a lot of people use way more than the four colors recommended. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this could be fun. I haven't done color work in a while. I thought this would be fun to, to work on and certainly something that I could wear pretty quickly. Um, cause it will be a kind of a fast knit. I think, I think it will anyway. So yeah, that is, uh, that is, that is all my knitting. Um, I know I talked about the sheep camp sweater two weeks ago. I have that aside. That will be, I'm going to keep that out, um, as a potential new cast on for, um, you know, in case I run out. <laughs> well, after I've packed everything, um, I also have a sock, uh, set aside and set up, um, for the same purpose in case I run out. All right, how are we doing? On time. Pretty good, pretty good. I have a little bit of spinning. I have been spinning. I posted on Instagram about it. So uh, yeah, I am working on a new, what will probably end up being a sweaters quantity. Yeah, it will be because this, this is one skein out of three and this was 400 yards. I can usually, three skeins of 1200 yards is a sweaters quant for me. Um, and this is uh, some very beautiful hand spun. I wished I caked it, but maybe next time I record an episode, I'll have one of the skeins caked. I haven't made a second or third skein yet. I haven't even started them. Um, I pretty much whipped through this skein in 
two to three days last week, and I haven't spun it all this week just because of life stuff. Um, but what this is, is it should be self-striping, somewhat blendy, and in somewhat rainbow order <laughs> with some neutral thrown in from time to time. But there are just some really wow moments in this skein. I love it so much. Um, this is 100% Ramboulet from uh, Sarah of Green Goat Ranch. And, um, oh, I have, I forgot, completely forgot. I'll put it, put it in here. I have some footage of prepping this, the fiber for this. So I'm going to put that in here. It's a um, bunch of clips that just kind of show the process. And I think I have a little talking there. So it'll give you an idea of how I, uh, how I spun this. It is a two ply and it is fingering weight. It's really nice. Ugh, I love it so much. Go watch. I thought I'd share my processing of, um, or my process rather, of how I'm going to spin this next spin. I had mentioned before on my last episode that I got a six day countdown from uh, Green Goat Ranch and it she called it Beach Rainbow. So um, I talked last week about, or last episode about um, figuring out the order of in which to spin them and you know and then figuring out the um you know the amount as well so here's the deal i heard from sarah of green goat ranch and she told me the order that they need to be spun in <laughs> so that was so helpful i didn't need to spend any time figuring it out she already told me and what she explained to me is that each um, little braid is a color and then it's two split complementary colors and um, with the beachy sand color mingled in there uh, in each of the braids. So she told me this is the order they should go in um, to make a rainbow. So super exciting to excited to do this. So what I'm gonna do each braid, I think, is around five or six, or sorry, five, 50 or 60 grams, like somewhere in there. I haven't weighed all of them. I just weighed a couple. Um, so I'm going to break them into, it'll be a total of three skeins. They will be two ply. Um, so each braid will get broken into um, uh, six parts to make six bobbins. And... Yeah, each bobbin will go in this order and then they'll get plied together and I should get something similar to the other rainbow sweater, the rainbow yarn that I have used for hoodies for my granddaughter. And we'll see, we'll see how it comes out. I'm so excited. And Sarah said she thought it would knit up really beautifully if I um, did it in rainbow order. So I'm excited to get to get going on this. So I'll, I'll show you the, um, the steps or the process as, as I go. Okay, so I have um, six little nests that I made from the braid. I just um, stripped it down vertically so that I'll get the color repeat in the way that Sarah dyed it. And yeah, they all, they, they are between uh, nine and 10 grams each. So I'll try to match um, the measurements or the grams so that two 10 gram gets spun together to nine and change gets spun together and two nine gram gets spun together or something along those lines but that'll that'll be a little trickier to control but um yeah, we'll see what happens <laughs>
I, that wraps up all my crafting. Um, I had a couple, I had a, a few people reach out to me and ask me if I was planning to do an advent. You know, all of the, if you if you like to do count on calendars in the month of December, right now is the time to buy. All the yarn companies are launching them. Um, I'm not planning to because I have about two, maybe three sweaters quantities that will not fit in the storage that I have prepped for the new spot, new space, new space I'm moving into. So I just wanna knit through some sweater quantities and not gather any more yarn, not take in any more yarn. So, um, and I have a bigger plan, a more long-term plan of how I'm gonna resort. Um, I have a lot of like um, single skeins of hand spun sitting in a plastic bin that will go in the closet and my plan is to make space for those single skeins to go into the the pretty storage baskets that I've you know that I have that are holding all of my commercially made yarn. So I want to kind of make room um, to move things out of the closet and into this nicer storage unit and maybe and consolidate basically consolidate some of my yarn so yeah I'm not buying any advents I also have two advents because of being sort of having a wrench thrown into my life in that I you know figure finding out fig, you know discovering that it's time to move um I yeah I just didn't I didn't have bandwidth to think about a what to do with those advents so those countdowns and one is a full month 24 day and one is a 12 day. Um, I mean, I'm not stressed about it. They're just sitting in my storage right now and I will get to it maybe in the fall or later on in the summer when things settle down. Um, but it sure makes me not want to buy any <laughs> right now. Um, in 2021, I got several countdown um, calendars, both half month and full month. and. I knit all of those into projects. So I felt very empowered to buy more for 2022. And now I've done nothing with them. So I'm not feeling as empowered to buy more. And yeah, I have enough yarn. So I'm just going to chill on that <laughs> and just enjoy watching other people open them and work with them. And yeah, maybe I'll get some ideas. Maybe I'll actually get to knit one of the advents in December, one of my countdowns in December. I will be buying fiber though. I always buy from Sarah of Green Goat Ranch. Um, that's what this was. This was my 2022 um, Green Goat Ranch fiber countdown. So I'll be buying some from her and maybe another vendor if one strikes my fancy. I haven't seen any fiber countdowns yet, but the yarn ones are out like crazy right now. Um, so yeah, tell me, are you buying any? <laughs> are you getting one? I'd be very interested to know. Um, so I think that's all I have for you. I don't, I'm not going to do woolly myths because I just don't have the bandwidth to research that today. And I don't know when I'll be back. Um, like I said, I'm going to tear all this down. This setup right here is all going to disappear um, over the next few days. And uh, if I'm back in two weeks, it will, because, it will be because there's either very good news or very bad news. <laughs> if I'm not here in two weeks, it's because I'm in the middle of moving stuff. Like I'm really in the middle of doing all that stuff. So um so we will see where I'm at. Um, it may be a month or more before I'm back with a regular episode, but I'll probably have a lot to show and a lot to talk about at that time. I hope you're well and I hope you enjoyed and thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit and like, subscribe, all of that stuff. You know what to do and I will see you again. Bye.